How's it going, guys? It's Cole from See Through Panel showing off Hell's Paradise Volumes 2 and 3, written and drawn by Yuji Kaku, published by Viz, and each one retails for $13 US. These are oversized for manga. Here, I've got a trade paperback. Not a manga, unfortunately, but you can see that they're definitely bigger than a normal manga size, so that's great. I love to have manga in a larger format because just the small pocketbook style format usually just isn't big enough for me because most of the manga I collect has amazing art. So before I get too deep, I'm not going to be spoiling much, but I am going to be going a bit further in depth than normal because I want to talk about just general stuff about how the story progresses. No huge spoilers, but just my take on how things are going. And I'm really enjoying this manga, so I do want to gush about it a little bit. It's going to be rather short because it's just two volumes of a manga. You can read that in one sitting. It's pretty quick. There are bookmarks in my books because the book has a fair amount of nudity. I actually ran out of bookmarks, so I had to just do two and say everything between these two is not allowed to be seen in the video. So I'll start with mostly just volume two because it's a lot easier. There's just a couple pages here. Um, so the basic premise is we've got convicts partnered together with executioners who are charged to put them down if they get out of line, and they are sent to a island for basically a battle royale with the catch that they are looking for, the elixir of immortality, the elixir of life. And we've just discovered this island is not only full of dangerous convicts fighting each other, but it's also full of monsters. And our main character, Gabimaru, who is a ninja, um, it all sounds very shonen, but it's very seinen, seinen and uh, very adult, a lot of awesome themes going through it. Uh, the gender norms and kind of breaking the mold on that type of thing seems to be a big theme. I'm not sure if I'm reading too much into that. We already have a cat, so that's a great sign for the video. But I just love the art in this book, and I think the story is going to a place that I'm really going to enjoy. I think it takes a lot of inspiration for Berserk on its monster designs, um, and I think that the character design has been growing on me a lot, especially because at the end of every chapter we get... I'll show you. We get a little, like, fashion review for each character, and I think that's really fun. I'll, I'll definitely find one here. There we go. So this is Yuzuriha, I think is how you say it. And it's a fashion review. She gets three stars. Just kind of talks about the character designs. And that's really endearing, I think, just to the author, Yuji Kaku himself. Uh, it's fun to get in their head and see what they're thinking when they design these characters. Very berserk-looking uh, close-ups when Gabumaru is in kind of a blood rage. Uh, monster designs also heavily inspired by Berserk, I think. That's just what I see when I look at them. Tons of awesome action in this. The characters are so consistent and well-written. I think that they each have a great personality and they each have... That's that's when I realized Berserk is a huge part of this because that just looks like Guts going full rage mode and fighting. Um, yeah, I think the characters are so consistently written and so unique that it kind of elevates it above a lot of manga that I've read digitally. Most of the stuff I don't love, I end up reading digitally. And then if I really do like it, I'll buy the uh, physical book. But that, I think, sets it apart, is that we get really great backstories for all these characters. We get to know them, and then they are on the chopping block. Anyone can die in this book. I assume uh, Sagiri and Gabimaru, our two main characters, probably won't die. But you never know. I mean, the way this book is going, anyone could die. There's characters that you just fall in love with in one chapter and then instantly they are gone. Probably forever. I don't see a lot of characters coming back. With the setup of having this elixir of immortality and having these immortal monsters on the island, we might see some returning characters. But I just couldn't see it for most of these characters. I really couldn't see it. Kind of bug fused with human... Physiology is kind of the vibe for the monsters. Uh, a lot of Buddhist and Tao um, designs. That's what they say in the book. I'm not familiar with that stuff, but that's what they say in the book. And I think it seems to be quite accurate. A lot of uh, research going on in terms of like the depths of the religion and the fashion seems to be two big things. He always says the traditional names of the like clothing items on each character when he does those little fashion reviews. And I don't know what any of it means or its historical significance or, like, how it looks other than it does in this book. But I think it's at least fun that Yuji Kaku is just kind of giving it his all. Here's Tenza, a character I really enjoy. He gets a 1 out of 3, which is fair, but kind of sad. Uh, if you might be hearing sounds of my cat. 
Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say with this book and just show off some of the art because I think it does pretty much everything well. It might not be knocking every element out of the park, um, but for the most part, I think it's ridiculously consistent. The pacing feels really awesome. Um, sometimes I think, especially with the gender thing I was talking about, I think it's quite progressive in that way, but it also has this traditional um, conservative viewpoint on like how women should be. And obviously our main characters are fighting that and proving that it's not true and it's not accurate. But when a character gets really, women should be this way and they can't do this, and then that character is then redeemed without changing his views, I find that to be a little annoying, and that does happen uh, with just one character. But it's just tough for me to like a character and just assume that he has been redeemed. Um, but that's not really a long-term problem because... Uh, that guy dies. And we don't really like that guy, so that's fine. Overall, though, the art is just amazing. I really just am interested to see where the plot goes, because it's not all going to be this Battle Royale-style race to the elixir. There's 13 volumes of this. I've finished three of them. And the plot has gone to places I had no idea it would go. This looks like fan service. It kind of is, but it's not really. Um, that's the another thing. The nudity in this book, usually used for plot purposes or just because it's an adult book and you can have nudity in an adult book, it's not often fan service. There's maybe been one page out of all three of these volumes that I would say had fan service nudity. And even then, I would say it was probably furthering the plot even. It can be both, and it probably was both. Cut to the end of volume three here. Yeah, but overall, I've just been loving this. I hope I can find some more manga like this, because I just think the world building is so interesting, and it just feels like we're going down a rabbit hole with this plot, where things are getting deeper and deeper. There's a whole society on the island. The island has three different areas that are named, and different races on it. There's kind of a, almost like, like a class system, where there's these monstrous beings controlled by these immortal Lord Tenzin, they're called, and they're controlled by another person that I don't know anything about. And I'm just really excited to kind of dig into this world and see what else could happen here. But yeah, just been absolutely loving it. Um, I'm so glad it's in the oversized format because you don't ever see manga, especially paperback. Maybe if it gets a deluxe hardcover, it's oversized. But with just paperback manga, you never see that. And I think this story benefits a ton from it. Uh, I will show off a page if I can find it. I probably already flipped through it once. That's fantastic page. And the action, as I've already said, the action is just to die for and consistent. It's not often you get a fighting manga that has a actual deep plot that consistently progresses while also constantly giving you action. And every time there's a fight in this, it means something. Someone's going to die. Something's going to be discovered or... It's going to be a very harrowing experience that's going to like further the the depths of our characters, which has been really fun to read. And I really love all of the characters that are still alive in this book. Uh, even the evil ones are compelling and uh, consistent, and I love that. So this is going to be rather short, but that's pretty much all I have to say. I've ordered volumes 4, 5, and 6, and I'm probably just going to bite the bullet and get all of them soon before I can not get them anymore. But uh, yeah, recommend me some manga like this if you, uh, if you know any, and tell me if it's seinen or seinen, because I never look it up. I always forget. Thanks, guys. Peace.